What's going on everybody? Welcome back to Chud's Barbecue. My name is Bradley Robinson and today I'm gonna show you how I made this beautiful, delicious, smoky, tender, rendered, barky, amazing sous vide beef brisket. Coming up! If you've seen any of my other brisket videos, you'll know that I'm a big proponent of the overnight rest. It's the number one tip I give to any backyard barbecue cook who's really trying to improve their brisket immediately. During the long heated rest, it really gives the brisket time to carry over cooking and then rest down to eating temperature nice and slowly. But because it's a heated rest, it also gives extra time for all that fat to render and melt. But more importantly, it gives all the collagen more time to convert into gelatin and that's what makes a brisket tender. Typically when I'm resting a brisket overnight, I'll just put it in my oven at its lowest setting, which is 100 170 degrees and it works out really well every single time but the only problem with the oven is that it's really inconsistent it kind of stinks up the house a little bit and the temperature just kind of swings all over the place because ovens aren't very high quality these days so I'm always trying to come up with new methods for the overnight rest to make life a little bit easier for everybody we did the cooler rest a couple of weeks back that worked out pretty well but there was no additional heat so I ended up having to throw it on the gas grill but when talking about consistency in the culinary world there is nothing more stable than a sous vide machine back sealing a brisket throw in a water bath and it'll hold at the exact perfect temperature for as long as we need. So that being said, folks, that's what we're gonna be doing today. And one thing is for certain, and that is that it is going to be delicious. This is a brisket. This one is USDA Prime. I picked this one up at Costco. And first thing we're gonna do is get it nice and trimmed up, starting by opening up this plastic right along the deckle so we don't score any of the meat that we're gonna eat. It's about a 15 pounder or so, which is a good size. So first thing we're gonna do is take out all this deckle fat. Usually it likes to peel up. You can kind of find the membrane. Get in there with your knife and just take that whole thing right on out of there. A lot of people just like to shave it down and they say that it's gonna help kind of support the brisket as it cooks. I don't find that to be true. And then you're gonna end up with a big chunk of fat on your finished product that you're just gonna have to cut off anyway. So I like to take it off right at the get go. Just follow the seam, not much to it. That's a lot of fat that's not gonna render down. While we're on this back side, we'll shave down this hump a little bit while taking off some of the silver skin and making this thing a little bit more aerodynamic, then tapering off this rough edge all in one cut. Beautiful. Same thing on this edge, just smooth it out. The whole deal here is trying to make it aerodynamic so nothing burns up, no thin edges, especially on this side right here because anything that gets too crispy on this side will catch the serration of your blade and shred your brisket on the board later on. Smooth it and out. Not much silver skin on this one, which makes me happy. And that back side is looking pretty good to me. Take down some of this fat while we're back here. Same goes for this side, just kind of make a sharp line that we can see once we flip it over, which we're gonna do right now. Another big chunk of fat right here, right where this point muscle meets the lean. So we're just gonna go down and scoop it out. There we go, all fat, don't need it. Start taking down this fat cap a little bit, about a quarter inch or so. And then on this one particularly, there's a whole bunch of fat right here. And you can see from the back side, there's a whole bunch. So we're gonna have to scoop a lot of this out. So probably the most drastic cut we're gonna do, starting like this and just shaving it down. That's looking pretty good. We may come back to that in a little bit. But now onto this side, we're gonna take all this fat down to a quarter inch as well. Just go little by little. Awkward to do this on camera sometimes. And the whole point of doing a trim like this, it may seem rather aggressive, but we're just trying to get as much usable, sliceable brisket at the end of the day, because this fat is all coming off at some point, whether it's cooked in your final product, or you can take it off now, and it's a lot more useful to me in raw form, because I can make burgers or render the fat down into tallow. Not to mention all this meat and fat is perfect for sausage making. Pretty weird looking point we got over here. Got some natural seams that I'm not too thrilled about, but we're just gonna round it off again, just make Make it as aerodynamic as we can. Chud scrape. The only reason for the chud scrape is uh, aesthetics, you know, making it look a little bit smoother, get rid of all your knife marks. Sometimes it's all about the looks. Now we just gotta get rid of all this flat and give it a nice brisket shape. Looking good, perfect amount of fat on there. Nice and clean, smooth edges, aerodynamic. Good looking brisket to me. Let's season it up. As for seasoning this thing up, we're gonna go with a classic SPG. This is two parts 16 mesh black pepper to one part diamond crystal kosher salt to one half part granulated garlic. Very simple, classic brisket rub. And we're just gonna go on. No slathers, there's no need for slathers on brisket. You're gonna get a better bark without it, unless you've been air chilling your brisket for three days or something. But nice, heavy heavy coating. That's the beauty of this rub is that it's mostly pepper. So you can go on really heavy without having to worry about over salting anything. And as always, whenever seasoning a piece of meat like this, start on 
the back side. That way when you flip it over, you're not gonna ruin your presentation side, which in this case is the fat cap, because that's how we cook it on an offset cooker. See, rub sticks. No need for a slather. Onto the front side, same deal. Nice heavy coating of rub like this also really helps you get a bark early on. And as always folks, don't forget the sides. Rookie move. And that is looking perfect to me. Let's fire up the pit. Have yourself a merry little boot snake. How you doing? We've got this pit rocking right around 275 degrees and I think it's time to throw this brisket on. As always, we're going fat cap up, fatty side toward the fire right in the middle here. And that is looking perfect to me. So we will keep this pit rocking around 275 and come back in a few hours and check on in. This video is brought to you by Quip, the Good Habits Company. About 10 years ago, my aunt for a Christmas gift got me my first electric toothbrush and it really helped improve my oral hygiene. The little vibrations every 30 seconds let you know that you're getting full coverage of your mouth and brushing for the proper amount of time really came in handy. Also, I love the replaceable heads instead of having to buy a whole new toothbrush each time. But in the last 10 years, toothbrush technology has come a long way. And to the sponsor of this week's video, Quip. I've been using this toothbrush for the last month or so and I gotta say, I love it. It is so much smaller than my other one. It's got a really sleek design and it's still all the same great features of the vibrations every 30 seconds to make sure you're getting two full minutes of brushing, replaceable heads, and it just makes travel a whole lot easier because it's a lot smaller than that lightsaber I was using before. The Quip Electric Toothbrush is loved by over 7 million people and for good reason. It comes with a great little travel head that doubles as a mirror mount to keep clutter off of your bathroom sink. And this is the all metal, all black version and it feels great in the hand. They also make a pink version just like this and in the plastic version they have a whole variety of colors. And for serious brushers, the new smart motor in this thing connects to the free Quip app, allowing you to track your brush schedule and also win all sorts of prizes, like free refills and a lot of the other products that Quip makes, like their anti-cavity toothpaste, their eco-friendly mouthwash, their expanding dental floss, and their sugar-free gum. But the real benefit of Quip is that you can sign up for automatic refills every three months. And that was my biggest problem with my last brush is that I never knew when to change the head or how long I had it on there. So having them ship refills right to your door every three months gives you one less thing to think about and makes sure that your brush is always in the best shape. And you can also sign up for refills on toothpaste, floss, the whole works, so you'll never have to go to the dental section of the grocery store ever again. So if you're looking to form better dental hygiene habits and want one of the first electric toothbrushes accepted by the American Dental Association, head over to quip.com slash chudsbbq right now and you'll get your first refill for free. That's your first refill for free at getquip.com slash chudsbbq, spelled G-E-T-Q-U-I-P dot com slash chudsbbq right now. Because your Quip electric toothbrush. Thank you, Quip. The Good Habits Company. After about nine hours completely untouched, this brisket is probing around 180 degrees internal and we're gonna foil boat it just to speed up the rest of the cook. Ooh, that's hot. But as you can see, the bark on this thing is looking beautiful. Very solid cook. Nothing's curling up too bad. Nice, strong bark on there. And that's what we're all about. Especially because we're gonna be sous vide this thing. I wanna have a really strong bark going into it, which is why I waited a little longer than usual to wrap it. And also why we're going with the foil boat. Feeling nice and tender, nice and crunchy. Just what we want. Beautiful foil boat. Back on the pit this goes for another hour or two to continue all the way up to about 205 degrees and then we will pop it in a bag. Probe and soft, hitting our internal temp. We're gonna let this thing rest for just about 30, 45 minutes just to come down in temp because we don't wanna vac seal this thing when it's piping hot. Otherwise, the suction will suck all the juices right out of this thing. Looking nice and juicy, nice and tender. Oh, like a glove. Couldn't be easier. And this is where the experimentation could really come in. Should I pour some beef tallow in here? Should I put some of these drippings from in here in there? Or will they all get sucked out? I don't know. That's an experiment for another day. Looking good. I hope that seals. But bam and there we go. A beautifully vac sealed brisket. Nice and tight. Worked out very well. Pretty happy about that. Nice color on the bottom too. Also, this is a great way to gift a brisket, right? Nice vessel. Got the jewel here. Any sous vide machine will work just fine. And we're going to set this thing to 165 degrees Fahrenheit. In we go. Beautiful. Alrighty, in the sous vide we are, and we're gonna let this go overnight. We'll see how this thing looks in the morning. After a nice long rest, it is the next day, and it's time to see how this brisket came out. 
I dropped this jewel down to 150 degrees about an hour ago, just so it's a little closer to eating and slicing temp. We're gonna turn this off. Ooh, looking nice and juicy. Bag didn't pop. That's a good sign. Ow, that's hot. And I know what you're thinking. Brad, it's the next night, not the next day. How long has this thing been in that water bath? And the fact of the matter is, with all the welding, video editing, and all the other various things I've got going on in my life, sometimes I have to shoot these videos overnight just to get them done on time. And according to my Joomla app, this thing went in the water bath at 5.30 in the morning. It's now 5.30 p.m. So that was about a 12 hour rest, which is pretty much industry standard. A lot of barbecue places will put their briskets on in the morning, pull them off around 10, 11 o'clock at night, put them in their warming cabinets and hold them until service the next day which is typically at 11 a.m. and usually sell out around two or three or four so anywhere between 12 and 15 hours is pretty standard for a brisket rest but before you ask I have no idea what the maximum rest time is but if you want me to do some experiments and do a 24 48 hour brisket rest maybe I'll have to make those videos let me know in the comments below but to ease your mind as long as you're holding this brisket above 140 degrees you're out of the danger zone meaning this thing isn't gonna go rotten or go bad or anything like that and theoretically it's just gonna get better with more time not to mention I could have cut in to this five hours ago, six hours ago, five hours from now, and it's gonna be just as good. And that's the real beauty of the long heated rest is that you don't have to try and time your cooks to be done at a specific time. But because I was up all night, I think you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button. I do this for you. We're on the road to 100,000 subs, so help me make up the difference. I'd love to get there by the end of the year. Oh, that is juicy. And you know Guga, he's always saying, save your bag juices. They're great for stocks and gravies and whatnot, so might as well save all these. That'd be great for the French dip sandwich. Ooh, this thing is feeling really tender. Oh, yes, please. Look at that glistening beauty. That looks like the best paper wrapped brisket you've ever seen. And that's kind of what I was thinking this whole time is that this is gonna come out a lot like a paper wrapped brisket because it's gonna have that really soft bark. And I can tell you right now, that is very well rendered, nice and soft. Let's check out the jiggle factor. Yes, please. And because it kept rendering fat in the bag, this is kind of like a cone fee brisket. I need to do an actual cone fee brisket. We've been talking about doing that for years. Let me know down below if you think I should do that. But without further ado, let's see how this thing came out. Yeah, I think that did its job. That's looking, ooh, real nice. Start out with a nice center cut, shall we? Gotta say, this is feeling really nice. Beautiful looking slice of brisket. Definitely looks pretty juicy to me. Good smoke ring, nice bark, held up really well, actually. You know what, let's give this a little taste test while we're here. Nope. Mm hmm Oh, wow. It's super beefy. That's really tasty. I mean, look at just, look at all this like smoky tallow juice that came out of there. That was surrounding this brisket all day long, just giving it more flavor. Yeah, that's delicious. Holds up and of course, pulls right apart. Very tender. Wow. That's one of the best leans I've had in a long time. Let's see how the fatty came out because that's what we're all here to see. That just cut like straight butter. Yeah, that's looking real nice. You can see just by how bendy it is. That's phenomenal. Don't mind if I do. This is the best bite of the whole brisket right here. Shall we? Mm-hmm. Obviously very tender, nicely rendered. And again, this is why we take out that deco fat in the beginning, otherwise there'd be a huge band of fat running through there. It does have a different flavor to it, in a good way, of just being surrounded by fat and juices. Kind of almost got like a, more of a roasty flavor to it. I don't know, hard to describe, but let's get slice number two. That might be the best looking slice of fatty on the channel so far. Holds up, looks, Phenomenal, perfectly rendered through and through. That nice translucent fat pulls right apart. And yet again, look at that perfect marbling. That is fantastic. I mean, would you just look at it? That's a great looking brisket. Bark held up, nice and tender. I need to eat some more. Uh... Pretty excited about this one, guys. Usually, you know, brisket's just a brisket around here, but uh, this one's real tasty. It's kind of a hybrid when it comes to the bark, because usually on a paper wrap brisket, you'll end up with incredibly soft bark, but because this was boated as well, like it's got a really thick bark, yet it's soft, kind of right in the middle of paper and boat. This came out a lot better than I expected it to. I'm definitely gonna keep this method around. This worked out really well. I think it's time for the official taste test. <laughs> got about half of that one. Ow, got 
got my finger on that one. All right, y'all, and that is it. That is how to make the best sous vide brisket on the internet. That's right, Guga, I'm calling you out. And I want everyone watching this video to go comment on Guga Foods or Sous Vide Everything YouTube channel telling Guga that I challenge you, Mr. Guga, to cook a brisket just like this and tell me that it isn't the best brisket you've ever had. Because at the end of the day, we just need to spread the word of good barbecue. But that being said, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please let me know by hitting that subscribe button. It helps me out a lot. If you cook this recipe for yourself, be sure to tag me on Instagram at Chud's Barbecue. I love to see what y'all are cooking. Big shout out to all the Patreon members. Thank you for supporting Team Chud and allowing me to keep making all of these videos. And until the next time I see you, please go cook something outside. Peace.